what are smart objects and smart filters? Well, as a short answer, the word would be awesome. And let me show you why. There are two different ways to create a smart object. If you were starting with a raw file, as you can see in this image here, if I clicked open image, what it's going to do is open it as a pixel-based image. However, if I hold down the shift key, it changes this to open object. Now, another way from within Camera Raw to open up as objects by default, we would click this blue text underneath, and inside of this dialog, we would click this open in Photoshop a smart object. So if we click that, notice that open image will by default change to open object. So the difference is one way you want to do it once in a while. For me, I have it on by default because I'm always using open object. So I'm going to click on open object. And right now, instead of opening a straight background layer, I now have this funny little icon as well as the name of the original image. What this means is this is now a smart object. And the way that it actually works is the original image, in this case, the raw file, is inside of this layer. You can't see it and you can't really touch it, but it's there and you know it's there because of the icon. But think of this as a container. Okay, we've taken the raw file and we put it inside of this layer as a smart object. If I were to double click on this layer, it's going to open up the original raw image once again. So in here, I can fix the things that are wrong with this image, even though I've already opened it in Photoshop. So for example, he has some blowouts in his face. So I'm going to click on the highlights and bring them down. to give those purples some pop. And then I'm going to click OK. So it's going to think about it, and then it's going to make the change to the file within this layer that is currently a container for the original raw data. You understand that? I double click on it. It opens up the raw image again. I can click OK, and it saves whatever changes that I've made to the file. So now when I save this image, right now it's named this as smart object. That will be the name of the file unless I go file, save as, to the desktop, and I change the name to something a little bit better for myself, and then I save the file as normal. Okay, so I've saved this as a layered TIFF. So even though I've saved it and closed it, I can simply open it up again, and there you go we have our layered file, which when I double click on it, once again brings us back inside of RAW, which is great because I can continue to make changes in RAW and not damage the original file. So now at its core, that is a smart object. Now attached to a smart object can be a smart filter, which simply means that I'm going to click on filter and I'm gonna select one of these filters to apply to the image. So let's say, purely as an example, I select Render Lens Flare. And I take this lens flare and I stick it right there. Okay, and I click OK. Well, what happened? It gave us a lens flare, but underneath this smart object, we have something called a smart filter, and then we have the lens flare that we applied. So now, what is the benefit of this? Well, let's say we don't like where that lens flare is. Okay, it makes sense. It's just floating up in the middle of nowhere. We didn't get it exactly where we wanted it. I can double click on the word lens flare, and it's going to open up that lens flare again. How awesome is that? So now I can click this and move it over here, click OK, and the lens flare physically moved to the new location. So let's keep going. I can click on filter, noise, add noise, and I can add some insane amount of noise to this image, and then go OK. So now what we have first is the raw file. If I double click on it, it'll open the raw again. I then have bottom up, I have a lens flare which on top of that has 
noise on it. Because we have these little eyes, we can actually turn on and off each of these uh, different smart filters. So if I click that, the add noise disappears, but the lens flare is still there. I can turn on the add noise and turn off the lens flare, and now it disappears. Okay? If I wanted to, I could even double click on this right here, which is a blending option. And now instead of 100%, I could say 50%, and it's going to push back that effect. So the blending option on add noise, I set to 50%, and I click OK. See how that works? I just undid that. This is with 50%, and this is back to 100%. Let's say next, I want to go filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Simply as another example, uh, with these settings cranked all the way up, what it did was it sharpened this image. See that? Off and on. It's really sharpened it, hasn't it? So I'm going to click OK. Let's say at this point we realized that this unsharp mask has done nothing more than sharpen the noise that's below it because it's going down up. So first there was the lens flare, then there was the noise, and then we sharpened the noise. So if I turn it off and turn it on, all we've done is sharpen the noise. That's not what we wanted to do. Clearly, we meant to sharpen before adding the noise. Now, with an old layer-based workflow, we would need separate layers for each of these steps. And because I want to mix them up and go backwards, I would literally have to throw away all the work I've done and start over. But I don't have to do that anymore, not when using a smart object. Instead, all I have to do is click the sharpening of the unsharp mask and drag it to the bottom of this filter chain. You see what just happened? Now it's going to take the raw file and apply the sharpening first, then the lens flare, then the noise. See this way when I undo it, it's in the opposite so it's sharpening the noise. When I undo it, it simply adds the noise to the sharpened image. So basically, if you think about it this way, with unsharp mask last, it's sharpening the noise. When I do it first, it's sharpening the hair, then adding noise afterwards. Now, this stuff does get complicated to people. Basically, you're just going in order. You're putting this in a chained order that you want these filters to be applied to the smart object, which unto itself is currently attached to the raw file. So even if I wanted to, I could double click on this smart object, and that would bring me back to this original clean raw file that I can boost this exposure on, as an example, and click OK. Now it's going to boost the exposure, then it's going to sharpen, then it's going to lens flare, then it's going to add noise. There you go. But I didn't mean to do that, so now we're back to where we were before we did that exposure change. Instead. I realized I don't want the lens flare up there. I didn't mean for it to be up there at the top. I really want it down below, down here at the bottom. So why don't I do that? If I double click on lens flare, which is sandwiched between the sharpening and the noise, I simply click it and move it and go OK. As simple as that was, it moved the lens flare but didn't affect the noise or the sharpening. I'm hoping that now you can start to appreciate the power of the smart object with the smart filter.